हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम प्रोफेसर एच आर चोपड़ा फॉर्मर हैड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ लाइब्रेरी एंड इंफॉर्मेशन साइंस पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी चंडीगढ़ इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल डिस्कस ह्यूमन रिसोर्स प्लानिंग एंड डेवलपमेंट विच इज पार्ट ऑफ द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ लाइब्रेरी एंड इंफॉर्मेशन सेंटर्स पेपर Human resource development is very important in every type of organization may be office industry bank hospital or any other organization libraries are no exception to it rather it is more important for in the libraries because in the libraries we have a variety of staff members which are human resource and these comprise of library professionals junior and senior computer people uh, software engineers people who do the menial job people who are concerned with information handling people who produce the uh, various products of information and those who provide reference service information service etc so we have different categories of people in the library and all of these are recruited keeping in view the job requirement their specialization and expectation in the human resource management we have to take care of what type of people are to be taken their recruitment process procedure for recruiting them their promotional avenues and other related issues similarly we have to plan how much staff we need with the increase of documents in the library or increase of work in the library or increase of clients in the library we have to increase the staff accordingly and it is not proportionate it is as per requirement we have to do the assessment we have to evaluate and then we have to do the recruitment similarly their promotion their job description job requirements job analysis and related issues are to be studied so this uh, is very important that we take due care for uh, recruitment of the staff their promotion and other related issues when we think of human resource for a library we think of two aspects one is planning of human resource and other is development of human resource in the planning process we first of all evaluate assess what is need of the library various designations various categories of people various levels of uh, staff in the library and how much they are needed this is decided keeping in view the strength the collection development total number of users size of the library and related issues in this planning process we discuss how much we need and how should they be temporary or regular should they be for some phase period for plan period or for all times to come secondly what will be their pay scales what will be their emoluments and also we discussed how these people will be recruited maybe through employment exchange or through some other method through advertisement through selection procedure and we also appraise them what we need from them what will be their duties what will be their expectations and how much will be remuneration i mean the pay scale pay grades or fixed emoluments how much money is involved per year or for that period similarly if they are to be retained and from which source the funds are to be uh, tapped which will be source of income and how they will be assessed second aspect is human resource development once the staff is employed it is not employed for all times to come in the same designation or on the same salary rather they need to be promoted they need more emoluments they need more salaries they need promotion for that they are to be assessed this will give them initiative this will give them incentive this will give them 
uh, zeal to work and this way they will work harder, give better output and they will deserve promotion. If there is opening, they will work harder and they will be elevated to the next higher pay scale, they will get more salaries and this system will go on. So, continuous evaluation is required. In this evaluation, how to evaluate? The top boss or the immediate boss or some outside agency will do that. How they will or it could be annual, uh, annual assessment or regular assessment. This way, they will be elevated. Similarly, the knowledge is increasing, new skills are coming out, new techniques are coming in, new gadgets are coming in, new machineries are coming in, new generation of computers are coming in. So, they are to be well equipped with the latest skills or updating their knowledge. For this updating of knowledge, they may have to go for refresher courses, training program, programs, short term courses or long term courses they have to update themselves regularly. This updating is not only once in a while, but it should be on regular basis every year, every two year, every uh, whenever new things come up, they should be made known. So, if they are competent, then naturally they will do justice, they will perform better, they will deserve better and the efficiency will be much more, the clients will be happy and the purpose will be achieved. So, the staff planning as well as development both are two coins of two sides of the coin both are important and should be given due consideration. Need and purpose of human resource planning. It is essential to evolve more satisfied and better development employees, recruitment, scheduling, selection of candidates to match the requirement, deployment and related placement decisions cannot be properly done if there is no planning of human resources. A plan serves a guide in all the activities that constitute personal management. Planning leads to great satisfaction of the staff, lower absenteeism, fewer breakdowns and better quality of work. Despite best planning sometime, unexpected problems creep up at its stage of implementation. There is always a provision for rerouting and restructuring the planned activities when there is an emergent situation to handle. This deliberate provision is essential to keep target to be achieved on schedule without abandoning any well conceived activity of the organization. Methods and Techniques of Human Resource Planning Human Resource Planning is a process whereby courses of actions are determined in advance and continuously, dated with the aims that the library is a growing organism and it will grow in terms of building, services, equipment and reading material or the resources of information. New developments, new techniques, new systems, new generation of information technology and new databases, new data banks will creep in. All this will require additional staff, updating of training and skills of the existing staff and new positions in libraries in the near future. Keeping in view the above factors, the following methods and techniques of human resource planning can be undertaken. 1. Estimating personal resources. First of all, the staff requirements for the present would be calculated. Thereafter, estimate for the next 5 to 10 years will be done, taking into account the overall objectives of the organization concerned. Employment planning can be done using the following techniques. Expert estimate technique. According to this technique, opinion of the experts is invited based on their personal experiences. This technique can be more effective if experts use the Delphi technique, which is a set of procedures to obtain the most reliable consensus and opinions of a group of experts. The questionnaires are sent to the experts for this purpose and personal context is avoided for obvious reasons. The estimates suggested by various experts are tabulated 
and the average number is then used for the forecast. Second, trend projection technique. According to this technique, the trends of services and staff in the past are taken into account. Staff strength can be matched against the staff that is actually involved in the work. Staff strength can be projected from the past experience. Thus, appropriate estimates can be prepared with reference to the number of persons required to perform different functions. Modeling technique. Here, the staff requirements can also be estimated using most sophisticated forecasting and modeling techniques. Trend projections are based on relating a single factor or multiple factors. Mathematical models are designed on these relationships. Estimates are projected using methods such as Marco model and analytical formulation such as regression analysis. Unit demand forecasting technique. This technique is bound up approach to forecast staff estimates. The top management sums up the units forecast to project the total employment forecast. By analyzing the present and future requirement of the job as well as the skills of the incumbent, this method focuses on the quality of staff. Induction and development. After the staff is recruited in the organization, the first, day, first phase of induction is an orientation program of the new incumbents. They are oriented with the colleagues, with the system, facilities, procedures and rules of the organization. The question of new incumbents are answered and they are familiarized with the working of the organization. The second phase of induction is performed by the immediate in charge or supervisor who explains the environment, work culture, expectations from the new incumbent and related issues. Acquaintance with other units or other sections or other departments of the organization is also given personally. This way, orientation of the entire organization is given in detail. This initial introduction to the new staff member pays very rich dividend to the organization. Training and development. This is most important component of the personal planning and development. The training can be of many types such as general orientation courses, short term courses, workshop, in service training courses, refresher courses, continuing education programs, etc. Uh, these are of various and varying durations. This should be organized from time to time. New techniques, new methods, new developments, etc. should be taught to the employees. Communication. There are many methods of communication to the staff. Oral communication is the more informal which includes meetings, discussions and suggestions. Written communication is also significant which includes house bulletin, reports, emails, etc. Effective communication with the staff leads to cooperation, coordination, cohesiveness, confidence, understanding, etc. It leads to healthy environment and tangible results. Human resource planning in libraries. Uh, we have different types of libraries throughout the world. These are academic libraries comprising of school libraries, college libraries, university libraries or other teaching type libraries. Another is public libraries which are meant for general public like children, housewives, retired people, professionals, non-professional, general public in the society. They need all types of documents right from fictions, novels up to the highly specialized knowledge books and documents. Uh, third is special libraries. These are special in size, special in type of documents, special type of client they have, special type of staff they have. These libraries are special because they are attached to special type of organizations like companies, commercial organizations, industries, research organizations, uh, scientific and technical libraries, etc., etc. Here, the users are scientists or special type of researchers. Their needs are special. The staff is highly trained in that type of service, so staff is special. 
documents are special always not books but different types of things and maybe non book material maybe whatever we have in computer or various types of things we have outside the library we get on loan basis we provide uh, website service we provide information from various resources so everything is special these are special libraries so all these libraries have different type of staff and different type of infrastructure these staff their designations are different they may be known not as librarian may be information scientist information specialist information holder library manager information science manager etc etc so there are various levels of staff in each library and the smallest library like school library may have only one or two persons and a national library may have 200 people so special library may have 10 20 people a university library may have 80 to 100 people it depends upon the size of the library also type of the library also but each category of staff has different level different nomenclature different designation different salary and different uh, job requirements they for them we need different qualifications and different experience for each category we have to modify we had to decide we have to plan how to recruit them first of all first of all we discuss and decide their qualifications job requirements emoluments and whether to get them through employment exchange or through some other method or through open uh, recruitment through newspapers selection committees or test etc so this method of recruitment varies from uh, state to state government to government library to library or as per policy of the parent organization but we have to recruit them efficiently and judiciously otherwise the purpose will be defeated the structure of the library of the, uh, their staff and their nomenclature varies so it has to be notified it has to be in the handbook it has to be defined and people should know what are their job requirements what is expected from them and uh, how much they are going to get what are the promotional avenues and uh, what are other details all these aspects are very important otherwise proper planning cannot be done and recruitment cannot be done and proper uh, advantage from the staff cannot be taken job analysis according to eb filippo job analysis is the process of studying and collecting information relating to the operations and responsibilities for a specific job the immediate products of this analysis are job description and job specifications thus the job analysis involves the process of identifying the nature of job and quality of the likely job holders uses of job analysis there are many uses of job analysis such as number 1 organizational design job analysis provides relevant information for completing the total steps of organizational design it provides the base for identifying the contents of different jobs their interrelationship and interdependence responsibilities involved in a job and the authority that may be required to perform the job number 2 acquisition of personnel job analysis helps in human resource planning their recruitment and selection and their orientation and placement the placement of the staff in specific job is determined by their match with job requirements job analysis helps in providing information about such job requirements human resource development the human resource development is undertaken as a continuous process to match the individuals and job job requirements such is indicated by the information provided by job analyst this is also helpful in career planning training and development of the employees in the organization concerned job evaluation and compensation 
the worth of a job is determined on the basis of job characteristics and job holders characteristics job analysis provides both in the form of job description and job specification performance appraisal which involves assessment of actual job performance by an employee in the light of what is expected of him such an assessment is used for promotion training needs etc this job analysis helps in determining performance standards of the employees another benefit is safety and health the operational conditions of various jobs such as noise heat fumes etc which are unhealthy and hazardous are also brought out by the job analysis hence steps can be taken for necessary safety measures from such environments another use is employees counseling employees who are unable to bear the stress of a particular job may be advised to opt for other sections within the library this way and it has a large number of benefits and job analysis is very practical and should be used in various types of libraries in the process of human resource development and planning for libraries job description is very very important in the job description we first of all identify the job what is to be done by that position what should be the designation or nomenclature uh, we will give the detailed summary of the job what is expected from incumbent uh, various activities to be performed by that person and the procedure involved in that so what that person has to do how much that has to do weekly monthly what other jobs can be assigned and what procedure of that job so that he gets the he or she gets the hints guidance and there is no confusion the relationship of this job with other similar jobs with the institution with other colleagues with other subordinates and seniors are to be defined well in advance and in black and white so that there is no confusion job description also involves job requirements and uh, uh, duties and expectations job specification includes uh, what is to be done and what is not to be done whether he or she can refuse something or whether we cannot uh, we can or we, we cannot ask them something that is clearly defined in black and white job rotation is also significant because he or she can be transferred from one place to other one section to other one job to other within the preview of total same job requirements so job rotation is possible or not up to what extent it is possible where he or she can be sent and where he or she cannot be sent is defined next important factor is job evaluation evaluation is so important that we can know whether he is he or she is efficient or not performing duties as per requirement doing good deserves promotion deserves elevation or no uh, if she or he is not permanent whether she is to be removed or she is to be made permanent that depends upon evaluation evaluation process is a cumbersome job we evaluate the job based on uh, daily performance weekly performance monthly performance yearly annual report and also confidential report of the immediate boss also some parameters defined for that purpose and on the whole we can know where he or she stands this evaluation leads to uh, promotion or demotion uh, benefits or no benefits and other re related issues role of the library authority is equally important library authority includes li uh, the parent body may be library committee may be university may be district board whatever type of library it is the library authority will be uh, determined accordingly uh, what are their policies that is equally important and we will be guided by the policies of the parent body library authority 
and uh, planning of library staff will be done accordingly. So job description is a very important phenomena in the planning process, in the evaluation process, and in the recruitment process and promotion of the library staff. Maybe any type of library, any place, any size, and any country. Role of library committee. All types of libraries have library committees which look after the problems of the library concern from time to time. The library committee is also known as library advisory committee, library management committee, etc. It is an executive type of committee which constitutes of the librarian as secretary of the library committee, the head of the institution or head of the parent body or chairman is chairman of the library committee, then some faculty members or local legislatures or specialists or representatives of the library authority, they are members of the library committee. The library committee is invited to discuss the issues concerning the library, allocation of funds and related issues. It also discusses the problems of the staff and budgets, future plans, etc., etc. The question arises, is there any need of the library committee? People differ. Some say it is more a formality, more a ritual and decision is taken by the librarian. But other experts say that library, library committee is a must. It is a screening committee. The decisions or suggestions or views of the librarians are discussed and reviewed and approved by the library committee. Sometimes they are disapproved, referred back, modified as the case may be. Secondly, the librarian plays safe. If it has the approval, if any decision is approved by the library committee, then it is not the responsibility of the librarian, but the library committee. And there are many members, so the consensus of the members is taken for final decision. So this way, library committee has its own uh, edge over the other factors. Financial troubles and problems and discussions of the members is very important. Otherwise, there may be chaos, there may be problems, there may be dissatisfaction and the library staff may not be happy with the librarian all the time. But if library committee is involved, it ensures a better understanding between library users, library policies, library staff and the librarian. The committees having strong public voice can easily convince the authorities and the public about the policies need, need of the library and needs of various clients is considered and it carries weight. Powers and functions of the library committee. A, a library committee has a variety of functions which uh, includes uh, providing sanctioning funds for the budget, modification, expansion of the library building, heating, lighting, ventilation, maintenance of the library building and related issues. It also looks after library furniture, fitting, stacks, machinery, etc. Their provisions, funds for their purchase, their maintenance, their upkeeping, etc. Library staff is also very significant for the smooth and efficient library services. Library committee plays a vital role in the sanction of and recruitment of all categories of library staff as per actual requirement of the libraries of the library. And library finances are very important. It sanctions uh, both recurring and non-recurring funds for the library committee. A library committee should frame a set of rules for the library we call library rules. These are also approved by the library committee. Proper machinery should be provided by the library committee for maintaining the library accounts and auditing thereof. If necessary, a subcommittee can also be appointed for this purpose. Library acts and rules should be kept up to date. Redundant provisions should be deleted. New provisions should be incorporated as per need of the time. This is also the function of the library committee. Standard library services to the library users should be provided, which is also 
the responsibility of the library committee. A library committee should find out ways and means of securing cooperation between various branches within the locality and also between other educational institutions and authorities to benefit the library, its users in the long run. Finally, the library committee is also responsible to lay down a policy for the guidance of the librarian for day-to-day -day administration of the library. Now, librarian vis a vis library committee. The library committee makes the policies and rules while the librarian implements the same. Thus, there should be a proper coordination and cooperation between the two. There should be no mutilation or squibbing in implementing the decision of the library committee. The librarian should prove himself as a reliable guide to the committee for projecting the business of the library committee meetings. It is equally important that the library committee should not interfere in the day-to-day -day working of the librarian who is the executive head of the library and he has to get the work done from his staff. The librarian should work sincerely to safeguard the interest of the library staff as well as the library users. He should also ensure the safety of the library material and equipment. In case anything goes wrong, he should immediately report the same to the library committee. The librarian should keep the committee well informed about the day-to-day -day happenings in the library in the form of periodical reports, etc. The meetings of the committee should be convened frequently and regularly. Thus, there is a relationship between library committee and librarian. The function of both of them are very significant and important and this leads to the uh, smooth functioning, better understanding and better efficiency in the library. In the present era of literature explosion and information technology, the changes are taking place very fast. We are having new technology every second day, new type of inter uh, new generation of internet new techniques, new gadgets, new uh, databases and various new websites. Everything is coming up so fast that we have to keep abreast with the latest developments. This is so important that if the staff is not given proper training with the new developments, they cannot uh, do, they cannot manage, they cannot handle the things. So they are to be updated with knowledge continuously, regularly from time to time, maybe through short term courses, refresher courses, in service training courses or whatever system we have in the library. That is important. Secondly, it is equally important that we take into account their promotion. If they are not promoted, if their wages are not increased, if their designation is not changed, they will be static, they will not be interested to continue, they may leave the job. So we have to have hierarchy of the positions and their promotional avenues should be open or their pay scales should be changed and enhanced. That will ensure their upliftment, their benefit, their promotion and also better work culture in the library. Similarly, there are some general guidelines which are required by the staff. They should be given orientation for that. Finally, uh, when we evaluate their process, when we describe their jobs, when we uh, think of their promotions, guidelines should be clear. These may come from University Grants Commission. They may come from state government or central government. They may come from uh, some international organizations, but the welfare of the library staff is on the para paramount. It is very important. If that is kept in view, definitely staff will work harder, the output will be, output will be better, and the efficiency in the library will be increased. So, in addition to the library resources, documents, infrastructure, and facilities, 
the role of library staff, library personnel is very, very important. And in this area, the planning of library staff and development of library staff both go side by side. We cannot ignore it.